Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this ultrasonic oil diffuser. This is actually not working at the moment and we're going to try to see if we can fix it. This is a very simple unit. Um, it runs off of this 24 volt power supply. It's actually a 800 milliamp 24 volt DC power supply which just plugs into the bottom of it. You can see there's a little spot here for it. There's a little fan here. Here's some of the specs. The way this works is you open this up, you fill it to the line here with water, you put a couple drops of your essential oil in here, you put the top back on, you push this button, and it'll turn on. It'll start diffusing the water oil mixture right away. You'll get this cold steam out the top. This little button will light up blue. Um, we sell these at the pharmacy that I work for, my, my, day, my day job I'll say. We have one of them out on the counter. It's a little bit of a different model. Um, that one there, when you push the button, it lights blue. This will light up with LED. It changes colors through a slow pattern. You push the button again. It goes to a slightly dim, kind of diminished blue color. And then you push it again, it shuts it off. This particular one, I think you can cycle through which color you want to set at. Um, like I said, it isn't working. So I'm not really sure. I haven't played with this particular model that we carry. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to go give this a shot. Now, I know somebody tested this out. It came back as a return, and uh, they filled it with water, tried it out, and it didn't work right away, and eventually it started working. So what I'm going to try to do is just open it up and see what happened. Now, I have a feeling I know what it was, but we'll see. It said something in the instructions about if you empty this out, make sure you tip it straight over, or you know if it tips over if a certain way, the water may leak back in and go into this, this little gap around here. And I think that's what may have happened. I haven't opened this up yet, so we're gonna take a look at that. Now these just pop off the bottom here. They're four rubber feet. And then there's couple Phillips screws in here. I do have this uh, screwdriver magnetized. It's kind of uh, inherent that that happens because I'm using magnets to hold them on the wall. And what I need, I just grab it and just the force of me grabbing it and pulling it past the magnet tends to magnetize it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Alright, now this should just open up. Ah. Now there is a little bit more in here than I thought there'd be. I wasn't really sure what I'd expect. Ah, there's quite a bit in that circuit board. It's all surface mount for the most part. There is a couple, uh, you know, conventional components in here. There's a pretty big heat sink going to that fan. Everything looks okay so far. I don't see any burn marks or anything. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. I'm not really sure what all this is doing. This is a little more complex than I thought it would be. I mean, I'm not sure what's really involved in generating the ultrasound signal or not. I wonder if I can get... see what that chip says on there. It actually doesn't look like it says anything. It seems like it's blank. There doesn't seem to be any kind of good marking on there. Let's see, there's a couple screws. If I take those uh, out, I can get the circuit board out a little bit. Everything seems to be pretty well glued in place here. So it's going to be kind of... Uh, difficult to get the connectors off. I don't want to dissect this too much. I'm not a electronics engineer or anything like that, so delving far into this is going to be a moot point. Most of the time, you know, things are pretty easy fixes. Now there is a, a TO220 style um, package back here but again it's blank I can't see any kind of markings on there so I'm not really sure what that is could be a 
could be a voltage regulator. Now there is a 12 volt fan in here and I did mention that this is a 24 volt power supply hooked in here. So that could be powering that. And I see there's a diode here. Obviously there's a couple of resistors. Um, um, not resistors, I should say capacitors. It's a choke here. Everything looks okay with this board. Obviously one of these is generating the you know, different colors for the LEDs, so there's going to be, probably that's what that chip does there. Um, looking at the piece here, this has got to be the power for the ultrasonic unit. I'd imagine uh, these are the contacts for the LEDs, possibly the sensor. Now, what I did notice, just looking at this here, is this is the connection for the switch for the leads, for the pad, for the switch with the LEDs on it and whatnot. And this is the, like I said, that's where you're going to click that on and off. Look at this corrosion right here. I bet that's what the problem is. So I do have to move the tripod because the camera is uh, set up right in front of my drawer here with my tools in it. Uh, I'm going to grab my old toothbrush that I use to scrub these things out with. I'm going to try to clean that crud off here and see if maybe there's something shorting out there. Let's see what we can got. I've never actually used this toothbrush for uh, brushing my teeth. It was one of those ones that dentist gives you for free. And uh, you know, it's just a basic toothbrush. So I just kind of figured I would use it for this purpose. You could see it's, it's pretty beat up. I've even shortened some of the hairs over here to get this uh, kind of sharper shorter piece here for a really good scrubbing at the end and it works really well you can see it's a lot cleaner than it was I'm ultimately gonna have to look at it up close with a magnifying lens to see how how well it came out I may have to go in there and resolder these joints or you know clean it take the solder off completely clean it up depending on how bad it is Let's see, not, not bad. A lot better than it was. You can see this connector here isn't used, although there's an option for it. Let me pause this for a second and take a close look at it. So I decided to pull the circuit board out to get a better shot at it. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of corrosion on there. You can see how shiny these contacts are. They're a lot better than they are. So the final thing to do is, is I guess, put this back together and put some water in it and see if it starts up. I don't have any oils, but they're not necessary because after all, you're suspending the oils in the water. The water is the main thing that's being effectively, you know, diffused into the air. And the water is there. Oils are just carried with it. But while we're in here, I figured we should take the ultrasound unit out just to give it a look see it's probably not going to look like anything interesting it's going to be a little disc but I do want to see what it looks like since I'm here yep that's exactly what it is it's just a little disc almost like a little piezo in fact I think that's actually what it is it's just a little piezo you know like a buzzer almost that's just vibrating and uh, that vibration is causing the uh, water in there to turn to vapor. It's a pretty neat device. The one we use uh, on, on our counter is, is a little different. Here you can see those LEDs. These actually look like... These look like the 50-50 styles that the tape I have used. It's uh, pretty neat. Oh, if this thing ultimately doesn't work, this would be a pretty cool little unit to salvage out of here. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and throw this all back together, and we're going to see if we can get this guy to work. I got everything put back in its respective place, and I started looking at this thinking, you know, with all this free space right here, and this extra tab right here in this jack, 
I bet you you'd be able to make a battery operated version of this. Hmm. You could probably do it with a couple 9 volt batteries. Actually, you probably need three 9 volt batteries. And then uh, you'd have to have some kind of a you know regulator or maybe a step down circuit involved to get that down to the 24 volts. But yeah, that's possible. So then you can set this really anywhere. And I'm sure it will work. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going to draw a lot of power since the power supply isn't very big. Well, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pour some water into this while I have it apart um, and see if it works. I guess this is the moment of truth, you could say. I got some off to the side here. I'll use the spring water. You could just use tap water. They tell you not to use filtered water or distilled water. Now, this is like I said, you'd put the drops in. I don't have any top on and it turns on and I don't know if you can see it on camera maybe you can here's that vapor and that's completely cold and you can see it changing color in fact let me turn off my light here turn off my other studio lamp Just slowly cycle through those colors and then you can push the button and have it go to that low color mode or completely off so that's all that was was just some water built up on there so I'd be willing to bet that's exactly what happened so now I'll keep that in mind in case that happens again be the first thing I'll I check in fact maybe I can offer a you know, repair for them. Now you would think whoever designed this would have known that was a problem. I'll shut this off. You can see the LEDs coming through here in the water. It's like a pump. It's weird how it works. Okay. Getting water all over the place here. Making a royal mess. So whoever designed this, you think they would have figured out with a way to put some kind of a gasket or fill this in with silicone or something. I don't know. Maybe that's how they get you to buy a new one, huh? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like my videos.